Hey guys, my name is Monica Warren and I'm a senior mechanical engineering student from Mississippi State University. Here in about two weeks, I'll be graduating virtually and moving to North Carolina to start work as a reliability engineer. A reliability engineer is somebody who goes through each device within a plant and makes sure that everything is up to code, meets regulations, doesn't need any repairs or replacements. There are several different devices that you can come into contact with as a reliability engineer, but one of the main ones is a heat exchanger. I've got a rough sketch of a heat exchanger drawn behind me here, and I want to talk to you about the different components of it. So here we have the body of the heat exchanger, or the shell. All right, and throughout this horizontal axis of the shell, there are several long tubes. That's what these three lines are supposed to represent. A heat exchanger is supposed to allow for two different fluids to pass through the heat exchanger and transfer heat between the two fluids. So you have one fluid that will come into the tube inlet and pass through the tubes out the tube outlet. Then you have another fluid that will come in through the shell inlet and pass out the shell outlet. Now, the shell fluid is able to move about around the outside of the tubes, never coming into contact with the fluid that is inside the tubes. As they pass through each other, even though they have the separation of the tubes, they're able to transfer heat. So the hotter fluid transfers its heat to the colder fluid. There are also these little things called baffles. Baffles are just small pieces of metal that are strategically placed inside the shell of the heat exchanger so that you can improve the heat transfer, right? Metal is typically a good conductor, so heat is transferred easier when you have that metal to kind of help it along. All right, so now that we understand some of the components of a heat exchanger, I wanna talk about how to calculate the heat transfer. So if we wanna look at one fluid, let's say the fluid of the tubes. We can calculate the heat transfer rate coming from the fluid of the tubes. I'm gonna go through an example problem and then there will be one provided for you to work out in a worksheet. This one should really closely follow the one on your worksheet and hopefully this will allow you to go through the one on your worksheet without any trouble. So the equation that we're using is going to be Q is equal to M dot CP T exit minus T enter. Okay, Q is the symbol we're going to represent heat transfer with. M with the dot above it stands for the mass flow rate. This is how fast the fluid is passing through the tubes or through the shell. In this case, we're going to call it through the tubes. CP is just a symbol that describes a specific heat. It's something I don't want to spend a whole lot of time on, but specific heat is just a number that shows the behavior of a certain fluid at a certain temperature. It'll always be given. You really don't need to worry about it that much. So then you have your temperatures, your temperature as it comes out of the tubes, and then your temperature as the fluid comes in the tubes, right? So let's go through an example problem. This one says, Fluid A enters the heat exchanger at 100 degrees Celsius. I'm going to write down our givens as we go along. So T enter is equal to 100 degrees Celsius. Fluid A enters the heat exchanger at 100 degrees Celsius and exits at 50 degrees Celsius. So then we have T exit equal to 50 degrees Celsius. Okay? At a rate of seven kilograms per second, this is our mass flow, or M dot. So at a rate of, the rate of mass flow is seven kilograms per second, okay? And then we're also given a specific heat value. Our specific heat is equal to 4.18 kilojoules per kilogram times degrees Celsius, all right? So we have each component here in the equation defined. All we need to do is plug these values in to solve for Q or the heat transfer rate. So I'm gonna go ahead and plug these in and say Q is equal to M dot here, which is seven kilograms per second. Then we're gonna plug in our specific heat value here times 4.18 
kilojoules per kilogram degrees Celsius. All right, and then our exit temperature here is 50 degrees Celsius. And subtract out your T enter, 100 degrees Celsius. All right, we're gonna plug all this into our calculator. Seven times 4.18 times 50 minus 100, which means we'll have a negative number, and we get negative 1463. If we want to go through units, we can see that kilograms cancel with kilograms, and degrees Celsius cancel with degrees Celsius, leaves us with kilojoules per second. So this is the rate of heat transfer for the fluid going through the tube. There are 1,463 kilojoules per second. So I hope that this helps you work through the worksheet provided. If you have any trouble with it, be sure to just go back in the video. You can pause, rewind, and re-listen to whatever you need to listen to. I hope that y'all are able to process. This is a lot of information at one time, but hopefully you learned a little bit about heat exchangers.